This is the, the, the section where we do jokes. I tucked the butcher now and held up her neck. I said, if you want to live to see tomorrow, you better start frying them eggs a little bit better unless you're frying I'm part of eating sloppy, slimy eggs. You understand the one here? <laughs> 안녕, yeah, I know it's Phil Lynott's birthday, but we're already behind. I was supposed to do a Bill Skernier episode at some point, and I got sidetracked by all these other black metal bands I'm listening to. So Thin Lizzy episode might not happen for a while, but uh, I figured I'd knock some of my excess inspiration out by covering three three different bands this week. So the other day someone comments, hey, you should cover Vothana. I'm like, I don't know what a Vothana is. I looked them up and it looked interesting. It's some band out of Minnesota playing some kind of black metal, but they're originally from Vietnam of all places. And it says that their lyrical themes are uh, anti-religion, Vietnamese history, war, anti-communism, and uh, national socialism. Uh Uh-oh! It's just one guy and he's playing some kind of... uh, atmospheric black metal so to get to the root of that genre you got to go back to norway you got a couple of guys up there you got this dude named varg you probably heard of him so what the fuck am i talking about let's find out he had a band called burzum and he sort of invented this kind of ambient style of black metal with very slowly moving layers of sound and drum beats heavily influenced by electronic music making for an overall trance-like experience with lots of drifting layers of chords and whatnot. But there was another guy out there named Fenris. Look, big sunglasses, not emperor sunglasses, big, big sunglasses. Very important. Always big sunglasses, cool band. Who did his own kind of spin on the burgeoning ambient black metal subgenre. Where he tends to hold on one note for quite a long time as he's doing here in the song up of Transylvanian Hunger. In en hall et flesk od mi or whatever the hell it's called. And the drum beats are not as electronic music influence, it's more just like this constant almost metronome kind of thing he's doing. It's very hypnotic and it's a lot faster moving than Burzum is. And there are obvious one-two counterpoint punches. This is the second riff of the song. It's the only other riff in the song. And it just kind of alternates between those two, along with a few transition bits here and there. So that's Fenris's way of doing ambient black metal. Unfortunately, he kind of disavowed it later on. And what the hell is this riff? This is what I was talking about from the first song. It's like this emotional escalation of the uh, of the fast riffs from Bloodfire Death from Bathory. This should never have been done. But a few other bands thought it might be interesting to combine the very long form composition of Burzum with the more sparse ambient tendencies of the ambient Dark Throne bits and that's how you get really cool bands like Branicald who I covered a while ago but also that's sort of the space that Vothana is working in. But what makes Vothana unique is their background bleeding into the music. So there's this one guy, he used to be in a band called Sword of Darkness back when he still lived in Vietnam. And it's kind of Nocturnal Mortem-ish, like early demos Nocturnal Mortem and kind of a old man's child-ish. Very symphonic and melodic. It came out on a Trinity Music Hong Kong who put out a ton of different Asian stuff. They put out like all the Rouger albums back in the day. It's a cool label. And this is, you know, kind of a cool band. Maybe a little bit cheesy. They're far removed from the very lo-fi ambience that a Vothana would be known for. However, that melodic character still bleeds into the music as well as his love for um, uh, Vietnamese patriotic music, which appears to have a very brash and aggressive, but also a contemplative tinge to it. I'm not too familiar with it, but I can hear these kind of melodies in Vothana, which is interesting stuff, if you ask me. So you take all that stuff, and then you work it into this ambient black metal mode, and you get some very cool stuff. We have the hypnotic drum beats of Dark Throne, with a lot of different melodic layers. They have a very melancholic sound to them. There's clear distinctions between the lead guitars and sort of this background pulse. And the composition is a lot like Transylvanian Hunger, where you'll have 
pretty um, repetitive riffs that will hold on single notes for longer than might be considered usual. But there's also sort of like a sparkling, glorious quality to it. This actually came out on Darker Than Black Records. The uh, guy from Absurd label, so the black metal fellow to be... Credibility is, of course, not in doubt. And he put out like like 20 demos of this stuff and then two full lengths as of uh, this summer. The one came out on July 1st. Here's the counterpoint riff. I like this one a lot. Working through that minor scale in a very melancholic and prideful fashion befitting the lyrical content of the music. So that's Rokana. Hopefully you all like it. I think it's pretty interesting stuff. It might be a bit raw for some of you. But having uh, looked through Vothana, it reminded me of something. So there's Korean black metal. You probably heard of it. Or maybe you haven't. That's why I'm here. Back in the uh, 90s, the incipient part of the uh, Korean black metal historiography, you had these uh, two melodic bands, Otheon and um, Sad Legend, who I enjoy quite a bit. But actually, my introduction to Korean black metal came way back when with a band called uh, Pia in the early 2000s. It was rumored this guy was like 12 or 14 when he recorded this album, and it was some really weird ambient black metal slash noise shit. But looking at Vothana reminded me of another band that's somewhat connected to that band that just had a really bizarre ideological slant to their music. They did a split with Pia. Well, they, it's just one guy, it's he. And the name of this band was Apparition, although it has changed names a few different times, and I think he's still going today under some uh, Korean name that I can't pronounce. But the interesting thing about this band is his ideological stance. So like, you know, you do your tribute covers to bands you enjoy. So at the end of one album, he puts a Bathory cover, Call From The Grave, always a good song. And on another one, he does a cover of a Horde song. Horde, of course, being this rather jocular sort of like unblack metal project, I think from someone connected to Mortification. So it's this weird like evangelical Christian thing, but the music itself is black metal and the lyrics are about how he basically is mad that uh, Varg came along and pissed in his cornflakes. But the apparition guy was not content with just covering that song. He had to change the lyrics around. <clears throat> The word of the God, which is older than the history of the Bible, the Christianity of the modern all kinds is dirtying the face of the God, will be judged the hypocrisy of the modern Christianity and lie. The scriptures of first mankind, it teaches the origin God which Korean believed in from the 10,000 years ago to forgive that them, punish downright, and crush the evil road. The way of that boasts of the great history descendant of the ancient Korean spirit. And then there's like pictures of him in corpse paint with a sword and bullets and spikes and whatnot, but he's wearing that, that wacky like Jewish prayer shawl thing. Okay, so, you know, if you thought that the black Hebrew Israelites, you know, we was the real Jews, was wacky, and then you thought Christian identity, aka no whitey was actually the real Jews, was even wackier. Well, here's the dude from uh, Apparition, also known as Teikari, also known as Malak. His name is uh, Kwan Tehun. And I'm not entirely sure what this guy is about. If you look at history as a series of dialectics between different ideologies, it seems like the farther Christianity gets from wherever it started, it gets weirder and weirder. Especially in Asia, you get like the Taiping Rebellion, you get that dude dropping sarin gas bombs on the subway. This seems relatively tame, however, and I think perhaps his unorthodox ideological stance might actually help improve the music. He's also big on uh, nationalism and Korean history, but maybe just, yeah, his whole ideology is the reason this band isn't bigger, because he's done splits with, like, Abigail and lots of other, like, fairly well-known black metal bands from that region of the world, and, uh... The music itself is quite good. Especially for a one-man band, I find his drumming to be very impressive. He's hitting lots of different cymbals, he's doing cool rolls. And there's a general interesting push-pull dynamic between these more melodic riffs 
and more uh, percussive, almost death metally transitions, you might compare it to a substantially more well-produced form of uh, war metal from bands like Blasphemy and such, although I'm sure, given his uh, lyrical stance, he would not be happy at that comparison. But the riffs are really cool. They go all over the place. There's that push ball between the more dissonant stuff and the melodic stuff there again. And it's really, really well produced for a very unknown one-man black metal band. Perhaps he's more well-known within the Korean underground. Maybe they look at him as kind of like a crazy uncle. But I dug this album. And uh, he also did a black metal cover of a crayon pop song, which, you know, I respect the hustle on that. I've been doing similar stuff. That's it. And with that, we can get into the main band that's been blowing up my stereo as of late, Volkanaz. Volkanaz is a Swedish one-man project, but then he has session drums from a guy that used to be in Kraft, so you know I'm all about that. And his lyrical stance, speaking of wacky religious stuff, is dark Germanic hedonism and anti-cosmic Gnosticism. If you're familiar with these uh, terms, you probably know that that's what the guy from Dissection that killed himself was into. That's what Kraft is into. I think Vatane were about that for a while. And it's essentially a very, very far to the um, Dionysian side ideological slant if you look at that whole Nietzschean Apollonian versus Dionysian axis that he outlined in The Birth of Tragedy that I've talked about quite a few times. Essentially, they're big time into abolishment of uh, artificial structures and a natural order that's founded entirely upon sort of like a bellum omnia contra omnes approach. Just a whole lot of chaos and violence, nature red in tooth and claw. Some bands take that into very satanic regions. Other bands like Volkanaz tend to use that ideological stance as a focusing lens for the nastier aspects of Norse mythology. So this guy, Wagner, he has a solo project band that's just his name, Wagner Odegaard, and then he has Tom Het, which was his first band, named after a Burzum song, of course, and then there is Volkanaz. And they all sound fairly similar. They all utilize a guitar tone that was, I believe, innovated by Robert Darkin on Gravelands following the Voice of Blood album. This very treble heavy, no delay at all, super dry, scratchy sort of guitar tone that a lot of people really hate, but when you use it properly, as on this Graveland album, as well as a couple of Peste Noir albums, it works really well. And that, of course, is the case for uh, Volkanaz. This is off of the latest Volkanaz full length, and it's a very, very angry track. Also very pounce, bouncy, not pouncy. Maybe he's gonna pounce on you. Rauer XD, I don't know. Heavy punk influence, but also very uh, technical drumming courtesy of that guy that was in Kraft. And it's low fi but there's also clear separation of instrumental layers. So I've been listening to this band a ton. This riff right here is the one that got me into the band. As soon as I heard him do this, this weird folky thing, as I said, dark Germanic hedonism. That's what got me into the band. I had to hear more of it after I heard that riff. He's similar to uh, Apparition in that he has a very wacky, complex, and perplexing ideological stance that I think bleeds into his music. And he also has like three bands that are all essentially the same band and have done like a fuckload of releases that all sound like the same band, so it might as well be the same band. I don't know, his solo project is perhaps a bit happier sounding than uh, Volkanaz is, but that punk influence is definitely still there. This is a good gym song. I know I say that too much, but I've listened to it a whole lot. Really, really good guitar playing. It's simple, and it's very melodic. You're gonna have to get used to these weird little um, exhortations and bits of Swedish folk intruding into the music. It's a pretty uh, integral part of his aesthetic, so sorry about that if you don't like those. So it's play, you know, it's very simple stuff that is played so proficiently and yet also kind of like the very ragged edge of technicality to the point where it all feels very rusty. 
It's all very bouncy in a good way. I've seen bouncy used as like a negative descriptor, particularly by the uh, Brett Stevens types out there for a lot of metal. And I don't know, I think when metal has a good bounce to it and it's done well, as with uh, Volkanaz and all the other uh, Wagner Odegaard projects, I think it's great. <laughs> So yeah, I guess that Wagner Odegaard solo album is happier than Volkanaz, but then Volkanaz does stuff like this. I don't know, that sounds pretty happy to me. Fairly uh, major key. Well, it's still in a minor scale, but it's uplifting sounding compared to that other Volkanaz song you heard earlier. Exceptionally punk influenced stuff. So Volkanaz can get as happy as his uh, solo project. Really good drumming on this stuff. I guess that's the other tie I would uh, give them to Apparition. Uncharacteristically good drumming for black metal. More of that good bouncy stuff. And then. His side project, which I initially characterized as the happier of the two, his solo band that's just under his own name, well, they got stuff like this. Very kind of ild yarny, super minimalist, kind of hanging in the air, spooky descending black metal. Maybe not necessarily angry or evil sounding, but certainly quite a bit darker than the usual kind of bouncy punk shit coming from that band. So both bands, bands, it's just one guy and both of them writing all the music, whatever. Both projects, if you will, have a wide range of emotions and atmospheres, especially for how simple and punk influenced the music is. And all the songs are super short, and there's a whole shitload of them on the album. So there's, it's almost kind of like a Brian Eno and other Green World type thing, where there's just brief snippets of different atmospheres, and it makes for a very interesting listen. His other band, Tom Het, works in a uh, similar musical venue, but is perhaps a bit more influenced by thrash metal. It's a little bit more conventional metal sounding type stuff, which I guess is why. Volkanaz started out as the side project of the three for him to test uh, wackier ideas that he had. But nowadays, there's more Volkanaz albums than there are Tom Head ones. There's only one Tom Head full length. But it's a good one, as you can tell right now. It's got that same sort of punk bounce to it, but it utilizes more thrash stuff as indicated earlier. There's also more black metal bar chord type stuff in it, so it's a little bit closer to uh, more normal black metal type stuff. So if you are very much a black metal purist, Tom Het might be the band to start with, and then listen to Volkanaz, and then listen to uh, that Wagner Odegaard solo album, but I don't know, I think they're all pretty great. He almost reminds me of a uh, Swedish counterpart to Peste Noir. Obviously, their ideologies don't line quite up, but I think when you listen to Peste Noir stuff like this... You can see where I'm coming from. They appear to be kindred spirits, which is probably why Volkanaz is kind of one of my favorite bands right now, because Peste Noir is my all-time favorite black metal band. So there you go, three bands, Vothana, Apparition, and Volkanaz, all of which exist in very unorthodox and unexpected ideological spaces, making very unorthodox and unexpected variants on established black metal tropes. So check all those out, and I'll see you next week. Bye -bye! Leave this place, pale face intruders, or suffer fate of Spanish conquistadores buried in desert below. Like um, I didn't like um, I was like um, I was like um, I was like um, I was like um.